Good morning, and welcome to Salem Lutheran Church. We're glad you're here. Uh, some announcements this morning, actually a whole bunch. Uh, first, an update on Pastor Nathan, how he's doing after his surgery. Spoke with him this morning during the Bible study. He seems upbeat and feeling better. He's reporting still there's pain, but he is fully expecting returning here next, Saturday, next Sunday for our service. So let's keep him in our prayers and uh, maybe give him a phone call or two to harass him into getting back here. All righty. We have other announcements. Avenues today, 2 o'clock. They are open and we are going. I'll be leading that worship uh, and I will be uh, presenting uh, the pastor's sermon. So if, if you're up for a laugh, join us. Uh, and uh, we'll worship together at the avenue. On uh, next Sunday, Messiah uh, in Mount Vernon at the Ma Mount Vernon Nazarene University. I make it an annual tradition to drive down there and witness the performance there at the chapel at Mount Vernon MVNU's university. It normally is a wonderful experience. Last year we had to do a replay because they didn't have it, but they are having it this year. And it happens on Sunday, December 5th, at 7 p.m. at Mount Vernon University. So if you're interested in joining me on this trek down to Mount Vernon University, I will be leaving the church parking lot somewhere between 5.30 and 6. So, well, actually it'll be at 5.30, no later than 5.30. So we can get there in time to get good seats and witness that performance. It is a fundraiser for their music department, so there is no cost to it, but they do ask for donations. Uh, that go toward their music ministry. All righty, uh, bell ringing. Uh, we are, actually, let's go one more, one, one thing uh, further. Blue Christmas. We have made it a tradition here at Salem to do Blue Christmas service, which is held on the longest day of darkness for the year. It is the winter solstice. It falls on December 21st, and I will be leading that service this year. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll join us for that service of remembrance and celebration. Bell ringing. Uh, we have bell ringing set up. Barb did a great job getting this set up. It was kind of confusing at first, trying to get a good time going. But we've decided upon the Wednesday before Christmas. That's December 22nd. We think that the times are between 4 and 8 p.m. We have a sign-up sheet in the back. Barb is going to verify that and get in touch with folks if they've signed up on a time that doesn't exist so we can finagle that going around. But at this point, we're guessing that it's going to be from 4 to 8 p.m. on the 22nd. It's being held at Bueller's Mill Town inside so that you don't have to bear the cold, but you can ring the bell and help out the Salvation Army this year with that ministry. Christmas Eve service, of course, is happening on December 24th. And as usual, we welcome people who would be interested in performing some music as part of the prelude. Please contact myself or Joseph to uh, work out what you would like to do. I'm, I'm sure you might be interested in accompanying something or, or helping out in some way if you'd be interested in, in sharing your gifts. All righty. Um, is there anything that I'm missing? Barb. Oh, yes, go ahead. So Barb is talking about the Zion meal that we help Zion Lutheran Church with, and that is coming up on December 19th. Right, and those, are, those will be in two boxes. They're not having the visit there. That, we'll be putting the two together in two boxes. Right. And then yes. It's, it's uh, happening right before Christmas, so we're hoping that we can get some people out to help us with multiple things. Uh, mashed potatoes in those five quart uh, crock pots, bean casserole in those five quart crock pots, and buns and rolls from where again? 
Troyers, the rolls from Troyers, a few plates of those things, and we'll be able to serve uh, a lot of folks that are hungry at the Christmas time. Generally speaking, we average around 35 to 45 people that we serve each month, uh, each time that we do it. So think about that when you're, if you're interested in volunteering some of your cooking skills, feel free, contact Barb, get that all set up, and we will once again uh, help out with that ministry. Any other announcements? Before I start, I want to thank the folks that were elected into new positions of council that showed up to council meeting on uh, Monday of this past week. We had a full council there, uh, and I, I, I truly thank you for taking that ownership early on, even though you're not really starting until January. Thank you for showing up and sitting in with our council as we meet. Well, with that, let's get the service going. This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of God. Please rise. God for whom we wait. In the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are now forgiven. You are the children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. We start our service with the gathering hymn from the Red Hymnal, page 244. Rejoice, rejoice, believers.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, alert us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and redeem us for your life of justice. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs>
years. I forgot to put that into the actual live stream, didn't I? Yeah, sorry about that. This is the litany for lighting of the Advent wreath. So if it's in your bulletin, I believe it is. The Lord is the living God, enduring forever. God's kingdom shall never be destroyed, and God's dominion has no end. God delivers the rescues and rescues. The Lord's work signs and wonders in heaven and on earth, for God saved Daniel from the power of the lions. As shadows strengthen and chaos roars, one candle shines, the hope of God's kingdom in our midst. Christ is coming to make all things new. In prayer for waiting, we prepare his room, and we are waiting for Christ, the light of the world. Today, we light the candle of hope. Our hope is in the Lord. We now hear God's word. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 14 through 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, 9 through 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all its saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel. this morning is from Luke chapter 21 verses 25 through 36 Glory to you, o Lord. and Jesus said there will be signs in the sun the moon and the stars and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves people will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. 
Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. O Christ. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up from David, and he will execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will, will, be li will live in safety. And this is the time by which I will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. You know, today is the first Sunday of Advent. Today we begin a new year for the church. This is the first Sunday of Advent. So the first question that I had to settle on as pastor was to decide what I was going to preach on this coming year. You see, each year I sit down and decide, am I going to preach on Old Testament, Gospel, New Testament lessons, which one of those three do I want to preach on? And this particular year, I sat back and said, well, I haven't done Old Testament for a while, so I think I'm going to preach on the Old Testament lessons. Well, you know, that sounded like a great idea back in August. But somehow, I'm beginning to wonder if that was such a good idea today, at least as I look at the lessons for Advent. I mean, how do I help you understand what these readings are all about. I mean, just take a look at the readings for this morning. It was written by a man named Jeremiah. But who was Jeremiah? Well, Jeremiah was a son of a priest at a time when the worship of the true God had fallen into bad times. Very few people went to worship the true God. Very few people went to the temple to pray or to offer their sacrifices. Jeremiah even thought that maybe he should have become, he shouldn't have become a priest like his father. Maybe he should have become a farmer, done something different with his life. And that is when God came to him and called him off his fields to be a special prophet. In fact, that was where Jeremiah, as we said, was when God came to him. He was out in the fields. He was plowing the ground. Now, the other thing I think you need to know about Jeremiah is the time in which he was living. The great Assyrian Empire had fallen. There was a serious power vacuum in the Middle East. Two great powers were vying for the right to become the next world power. Egypt to the south of Israel, Babylon to the north and east of Israel. Now, the king of Israel and the people of Israel thought that this would be a perfect time to reestablish their independence. Assyria had fallen. Babylonians and Egyptians were fighting each other. Now was the time to strike. Now was the time to establish themselves once again as a free and independent nation. Jeremiah, on the other hand, was the prophet who stood up and said, nah, not a good idea. In fact, he was the one who told them in his writings that they should just lay down their weapons, give in to the Babylonians, because God was angry with the Israelites. 
He was angry with them because they had turned from God. He was angry with them because they no longer obeyed the laws of God. They no longer kept the Sabbath day holy. They no longer came to the temple and offered their sacrifices. They no longer worshiped God. And their punishment from God for all of this was that they would be conquered by the Babylonians. So Jeremiah says to resist the Babylonians was to fight against the will of God. The best thing they could do was to lay down their weapons and take their medicine. Well, you can just imagine how popular this made Jeremiah with all the folks back home. It was sort of, would be sort of like someone standing up after 9-11 and telling us that this was our punishment from God, that we got what we deserved. So we should just stop complaining and take our medicine like a man. I don't think that kind of talk back on 9-11 would have won us any popularity contests. Well, it didn't win one for Jeremiah either. It is out of this that our lesson for this morning comes. It is a lesson about hope and a promise. It is a lesson that says even though God is angry, angry at the Israelites in this case, even though the punishment is coming, even though the Babylonians will conquer Israel and destroy Jerusalem, even though they will be carried off to Babylon, God hasn't forgotten his promises. And so in this lesson, we hear God and Jeremiah repeating the promise of hope. One day they would return, it says. One day Jerusalem would arise from the ashes. One day God would send a descendant of David to make all things right between God and his people. One day. Jerusalem did fall to the Babylonians. They were carried off to be slaves in Babylon. But a hundred years later, they returned. Jerusalem rose from the ashes. And the other promise, well, about 500 years later, some shepherds were sitting on a hillside out of some tiny village called Bethlehem when suddenly an angel appeared to them and said behold I bring you good tidings of joy for this day in the city of David a child has been born his name is Jesus he is the Messiah he has come to save all people from their sins and to make all things right with God Jerah reminds us this morning that God's love for us is everlasting. God loves us not because we are his obedient children. He loves us in spite of the fact that we're not. God has promised us that he will love us now and he will love us forever, no matter what. And that promise was kept in a most dramatic fashion by God in a tiny village called Bethlehem on that very first Christmas. So here we are, beginning another Advent. And what God wants us to remember is that Advent is not about the time to get your wish list together. It's not about standing in all line all night long to get Best Buy's new dream product. It's about preparing our hearts and our lives and our homes for him who comes to us as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It's about a promise made and a promise kept. It's about Jesus. So do a few things I, I would suggest to you this, this Advent. Set up an Advent wreath for one thing in your house. Light the candles and mark the passages of the week to Christmas. If you have children, teach the children the real meaning, or your grandchildren, the real meaning of this year. Take a couple of times, an extra moment, to, to show your love for a friend at this time. Look for ways to share the love of God. Take up a food collection in your neighborhood and bring the food to people to people. Volunteer to, to help someone hand out toys or food. Take a fruitcake. By the way, I absolutely love fruitcake. I know that's kind of a standard joke during the holidays. 
There's only one fruitcake and it just keeps getting passed around. I love fruitcake. So make a fruitcake. Take it to a neighbor. Maybe to a neighbor who's celebrating their, their first Christmas without their spouse. Come out and sing. Join a group and sing Christmas carols. This time of the year is about God so loving the world. It's about a promise made. It's about a promise kept. Find a way in your heart and in your life to celebrate that. Amen. Please rise and join us in singing our hymn of the day. Hymn 256 in the red hymnal, Comfort, Comfort, Now My People. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. God of presence and peace, strengthen your church around the globe to proclaim the message of your love coming to the world. Open our hearts to recognize your face in all people and in all of creation. God of mighty redwoods and microscopic plants, fields and city parks, the wind and the waves, be a healing balm to our wounded planet. May we nurture what you have lovingly created. God of equity and compassion, bring righteousness and goodness to all peoples of the earth. Give a heart of discernment and integrity to leaders in our communities. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. God of comfort and care, be present with those who watch and wait. Come to all who await births, deaths, divorces, new unions, new jobs, retirements, healing, and life transitions of every kind, especially Barbara, Monica, Lynn, Calvin, Marianne, Jean, Tony, and George. God of promises kept and new dreams awakened, shelter your people from destructive storms. We pray for those whose lives have been upended by natural disasters, for the work of Lutheran Disaster Response, Lutheran World Relief, and other relief organizations. God of companionship and community, we give you thanks for the saints who journeyed with us and now abide in you. Even in distress and uncertainty, make us confident that you pro your promises endure forever. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's take a moment and share that peace with one another. Thank you for joining us this Sunday for our Sunday live stream service. This is the time that we would be passing the offering plate. I encourage you to make a contribution to Salem Lutheran Church either by check or by using our PayPal button that is found on our slcw.org website. Thank you in advance, and I now return you to our service.
pray. God, our waiting, God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal. Through Christ Jesus, our pathway and our peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life and so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this, is, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us your, the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food. The body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, O Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Let us pray. Most high God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all, through Christ Jesus, our host and our guest. Amen. Now the blessing. Please stand. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen. Let us all sing together, O come all ye faithful, red hymnal, page 283, our sending hymn for today.
peace, Christ is near.